In today's video I want to go over my Sharon build that uses Release Cutting Force. This build is mainly for dealing with hordes of enemies in a row, although with the cost reduction and the, the skill cooldown that we have, we're able to use this skill often, allowing us to spam it, meaning whenever we're fighting enemies, we can actually spare to use some of them on enemies that are standing by themselves. I was testing this build in the lab, but you shouldn't always test your build in the lab. I do like to test my builds in the lab, because that allows me to get a baseline for my damage, but I do like to go test the builds inside of infiltrations and regular missions. The best usage of this build is if you have tons of enemies running towards you and you can just use your first and it will send out the sword beam that flies forward and it pierces through all of the enemies. I've written up another document for this. This time I tried to keep it short. I don't actually have any math in this one. I feel like there's no point in having the math for every single module. Plus it takes way too long to actually calculate this anyway. So this release cutting force. This module changes your first ability. So it changes cutoff beam to release cutting force. I'll have on screen the before and after of cutoff beam and release cutting force so you can see them side by side. So whenever you use Release Cut and Force, the skill cooldown is reduced, the MP cost is reduced, and the damage is reduced. So you can see that on Cut Off Beam we have 802.7, and then on Release Cutting Force we have 230.4. With additional mods you can also increase this damage, but since the reduction is so much, it doesn't really increase it much either. You also have the range reduction, so you go from 4.4 times 6 to 1 times 6, and the maximum expandable range is is the same and you can increase the total range up to 150%. Now with release cutting force we gain a new stat called the projectile speed and you can increase this projectile speed by using the arch acceleration mod that is this mod right here skill speed and range increase modifier that will increase the speed and the range of the actual skill but the speed is only as fast as it travels and then the electrocution infliction that we have is the effect that we have on enemies so when we damage an enemy we inflict electrocution although with release cut and force we have slightly less damage on the electrocution but the continuous damage interval is still one second and the duration is still three seconds you can increase the duration by using duration mods like battle of stamina outstanding investment mp accelerant maximized duration or skill extension you can also use multi talented for skill cost and duration but this doesn't add much to the skill so it's not worth using now for the module breakdown these are the modules that i've selected personally although these modules are all flexible and it's entirely up to you and your playstyle. release cut and force is obviously the red mod that we're using which allows us to change the cutoff beam. So instead of being stuck in place and slicing the air, we now unleash a sword aura that flies through the air. We obviously have our module capacity one for more module space, increased health for survivability, this just lets us live longer. Emergency measures for the skill critical hit rate and skill critical hit damage. Front lines for skill critical hit damage and skill critical hit rate. Skill insight for the critical hit rate. Skill concentration for the skill critical hit damage. These all four allow you to crit more often and deal more damage when you crit and this is applied to your initial hit and the continuous damage as well as you can see on the electrocution continuous damage and then the skill effect is just the damage when you hit them we then use skill simplification for the skill power modifier although we have the negative effect of max mp minus 25 percent this means we have less mp to actually cast the skill so it's entirely up to you you can also change this for other modules Electric Specialist for the electric skill power, MP conversion for the skill cooldown, but then we also have the negative effect of max MP minus 15%. Then we have Nimble Fingers for skill cooldown. Both of these cooldowns are so that we can reduce the 4.5 seconds down to 1.7. Then Strong Mentality for the skill cost. This module just lets us counter the Slayer set. And the skill power modifier and electric skill power are just to increase the damage on the initial hit and the continuous damage as well. Now Electric Specialist, you can switch for focus on electric. This will just give you an extra 6.1 skill cooldown if you want the cooldown to be further but you'll be sacrificing a little bit of damage but it'll allow you to spam the skill more often and for skill simplification you can switch it for focus on fusion for the extra skill cooldown but you'll have less skill power modifier now with this build since our skill power modifier is so low we want to try and max out the amount of skill power we have that's why i went with skill simplification now obviously you could be saying that you could take maximize power and that will give you even more skill power modifier but then that will give us the skill cooldown of plus 50 percent and we don't want that as we want to be able to spam this skill as often as possible but then if you don't want to take focus on fusion you can take 
focus on specialist this gives extra damage as well over the focus on fusion but you still do less damage than skill simplification but if you want the extra mp then you obviously switch it for that and you'll deal slightly less damage but you'll have more mp to spam the skill now one thing i was thinking about doing was changing strong mentality for maximize conservation this will reduce the mp cost to 15.3 this will reduce the mp cost but you'll be missing minus 20 percent skill power modifier and we desperately need skill power modifier for this build to deal damage that's why i was taking strong mentality so that we didn't have the negative effects and there's no real reason to take maximize efficiency as this only gives us 0.6 percent extra and then we're also losing the minus 3.7 another thing that you could do is also just decide that you don't even want another thing that you could decide is that you don't even want the skill cooldown or the skill cost you could just go for even more damage so you could switch the skill cooldown or skill cost or the increased hp for extra damage which is the electric skill power from electronic synctium and then you can maximize your damage but then you'll obviously be suffering from the skill cost or skill cooldown and if you switch out your increased hp then you'll be dying more often unless you're able to dodge every single bullet from an enemy like neo so you can just experiment with the modules and see what combination you like the most for your playstyle obviously for the most damage you want more skill power modifier this one is the best one you can get for skill power modifier without having the skill cooldown and electric specialist is the highest you can get as well for the electric skill power you can also take technician as well but you'll be doing even less damage so it's entirely up to you how you build it you can go for the lowest skill cooldown or the lowest skill cost or both and then have less damage or you can try to have a balance between all three so you have cooldown skill cost and damage with a little bit of survivability or you can go for more survivability but then you'd have to switch one of these modules as well it's basically just a matter of preference so you can just experiment to see what one works best for your playstyle obviously we're using the slayer set so we can get the most damage possible out of it but this comes with the skill cost plus 15 percent that's why we negate it with the strong mentality on the auxiliary power we want mp recovery out of combat and max hp on the sensor we want mp recovery in combat max mp on the memory we want defense and mp recovery modifier and on the slayer processor we want shield recovery modifier and max shield now for the reactor you probably want a better weapon for the mounting but the reactor you want is tingling mixture reactor this is for the electric skill power boost ratio and the fusion skill power boost ratio and then for the substats the first substat that you want is your skill critical hit damage but your second substat can be skill cost or skill cooldown and then the alternative ones that you can have for your second substat can be either skill critical hit rate or electric skill power boost ratio all four of those for your second substat is still good so it's entirely up to you what you want you want to go with obviously with the weapon mounting you want the 160 percent but it entirely depends on what weapon you get it on because most people want to use their favorite weapon I personally would probably change the weapon mounting for something else, but this is what I was able to get while farming today. Now, how to actually play the build. You may have seen at the start that I was using the camo. To maximize the effect on this with this build, you want to combine the camo with your first, but you also get the utility out of your passive as well. So if we hover over our active camo, you'll see in the description, whenever we exit out of the active camo, we gain ambush. This ambush gives us the buff, which is outgoing damage increase plus 100%. And this is every time we exit out of the camo. And then you'll see for the passive buff, Assassinator, when in the ambush state, killing an enemy by using a skill, it resets the active camouflage cooldown. And this passive buff has a cooldown as well of 17 seconds. So you can only reset the active camo cooldown every 17 seconds by killing an enemy. So obviously with this build, you have a low cooldown on it and low cost which allows us to use the first ability quite frequently so if it the ambush buff we deal at 984,000 and then we tick for 367 but then when we use our camo you can then use your first skill to activate the ambush or when you exit out of the camo or the camo ends we gain the ambush buff on the left and when we use our skill we gain increased damage of 100% so you can spam the camo to enter and exit out of it instantly to gain the buff and then use your skill or you can just enter the camo and then use your skill personally i find that spamming the second skill is way better because you can just enter and exit it instantly and then use your first and then we tick for 686,000, and then the initial hit is 1,840,000. now with the passive assassinator we use our camo and then whenever we kill an enemy we gain our camo back instantly so we use our camo we kill an enemy, we gain our camel back, we can go back in there again, and then use the buff again. So camo, we gain it back, camo again, we gain ambush again, and then we can just kill the enemies again. 
So whenever we kill an enemy with a skill, we enter active camelback, and you will see the passive icon next to our fourth skill. We'll go on cooldown whenever we get a kill. You can see that cooldown on the right, and it has a 17 second cooldown. So the skill rotation is you use your camo, we get in the ambush stack, we use our first, and from the passive we get our camo back again, then we use our camo, and then we use our first again. And we can also just keep spamming the first skill so that we can kill off the enemies, if we don't have the cooldown on our camo. I'll have my document in the description below. As usual, this time I didn't do the calculations for all the modules, as it takes way too long to calculate all that for each character. If you do want me to do some math for certain modules or characters, just let me know in the comments. I'll have all these notes in the description below. If you find listening to all this information a bit difficult and reading over a document way easier, or you could even read over the document while listening to what I'm explaining. If you find the video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, it'll help the channel a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.